I'm pretending there's a power outage, and I'm able to run my fridge, chest freezer, boil water, make dinner, charge my devices, all at the same time with this new battery. There's one big disadvantage to a grid-tied solar array like what I have, because even though it provides for all of our electricity, when the grid goes down, I lose power just like everybody else. I was a little embarrassed the other week after a blackout. My neighbor pointed to my solar panels and he said, well, at least you still have power, and I had to tell him I actually didn't until now. This is the brand new EcoFlow Delta Max. It's a bigger and more feature-packed version than the original Delta. And in this video, I'm going to review it and I'm gonna show you how I would use it in a real life scenario if the grid were to go down and we didn't have power to our home for a long time. So what is this thing? The Delta Max is a battery storage unit with a capacity of over two kilowatt hours and it can provide you with direct AC and DC power. It's portable and can power almost any device in your home, RV, or anywhere you don't have access to the power grid. And since it doesn't burn any fuel, you can leave it running while it's indoors. And if you need more capacity, you can add up to two more batteries to achieve a total of over six kilowatt hours. And all of this can be mobile and ready to be used at a moment's notice. So if the power's out at my house or a friend's, I can use this to power the fridge, cook food, or boil water in case of an emergency. Now, because this is a battery, it has to be charged up. And you can do that in three ways with the included cables. You can charge from a wall outlet, your car's 12 volt port, or directly by solar panels. And with the option to charge by solar panels, you could potentially be off grid with this power source indefinitely. That's why a device like this is sometimes called a solar generator. I'll get to the charging features in a minute, but let's first look at what it can output, starting with the six AC outlets on the back. These outlets are powered by a huge 2400 watt inverter that can surge up to 5000 watts. Now to give you a sense of what these numbers mean, I hooked up a 10,000 BTU window air conditioner. And when the compressor kicked on after about a minute, the surge actually blew the fuse on my watt meter, but the Max had no trouble with that surge. Now I wanted to know what the surge was, so I used a different meter and took a few measurements and I was seeing an average surge close to 5000 watts. So it can handle this big surge that lasts a brief moment, but what about 2400 watts of ongoing power? Well, to find out, I kept the air conditioner running. I added my refrigerator, my chest freezer, my laptop, and my phone. And with all of these drawing power, it currently adds up to about 1200 watts. So to help it get over 2400, I grabbed my wife's hairdryer and I tried a few settings. And once I turned on the full fan and maximum heat, the output sailed past 2400 up to 2900 watts of output. So the inverter is putting out a sustained 500 watts above its rating, and it ran like this for about a minute before the inverter quit and overload showed on the screen, which is what I expected. In another test, I simulated making breakfast on a 1500 watt griddle and boiling a liter of water, which is also four cups, at the same time. With the griddle at the highest setting and the kettle heating the water, the Delta Max had no problem running above 2400 watts for five minutes which is when the kettle shut off because the water was boiling. Now the kettle and the griddle are resistive loads, which means they're mainly heating elements. If I wanted to add more resistive loads or devices not sensitive to a drop in voltage, on top of these two while they're running, you can do that up to 3,400 watts. And in order to do this, you have to use a feature called XBoost, and you could turn that on or off inside of the EcoFlow app. When XBoost is enabled and the power draw goes above 2,400 watts, the system will lower the voltage to meet the current demand. You can see here that this time, when the kettle and the griddle are running and XBoost is on, the voltage is lowered from 120 volts to 118 volts. And this lowered voltage will be the case across all six AC ports. And on the display with XBoost on, it's keeping the inverter from outputting more than 2400 watts. For the DC outputs, you have a number of options. Below the AC outlets, there's a 12 volt car port that can do up to 10 amps, and you can run something like a portable fridge on it. And with a supplied cable, you can use one of the 12 volt ports to run your DVD player, for example. On the front, there are two USB-A and two USB-A fast charge ports. There's also two 100 watt USB-C ports. So for example, you could power your laptop directly from one of these ports. The display is very nice looking and tells you the key information you need to know at a glance, like charge on the battery, the input output values, the expected runtime, or if it's charging, it'll show you how long until a full charge. The Delta Max weighs about 48 pounds, so it's on the heavy side, but with two handles, I personally don't think it's that much to lift into a car trunk, say if you're going camping. The smart battery weighs about 40 pounds, and each battery has a compartment on the top to store the connection cable. The Delta Max has a built-in Wi-Fi, so it can communicate with the EcoFlow app and give you a ton of information and control. Once you select your device, you can see the total input and output wattages. 
If you click on the input or output tab, you get a different screen with more information. On the input tab, it's really neat. They've separated out solar versus AC charging. And if you have the extra batteries connected, down here you can monitor their power levels. On the output tab, you can see the total for all the AC outlets, the 12 volt outputs, and each individual USB port on the front. There's also this awesome feature where you can remotely turn on and off each section. Under settings, you have access to some really great features. You can change the upper and lower charge ranges. Say if you're using it more like a UPS, the recommendation is to change it to 10 and 80%. You can change the current on the car DC input from four to 10 amps. Perhaps my favorite in here is the ability to change the wall AC recharging speed. To change it from the default, you flip the switch on the back of the max, and then you can choose from 200 up to 1800 watts. And in all the tests I did, the selection matched almost exactly to the meter reading. And also here they list a smart generator, and even though it's not out yet, this fuel generator can connect into one of the extra battery ports on the max. There's some other functionality here that gives you control over timeouts for inactivity. And another important part is that firmware upgrades are easy. So when a new one comes out, out, you can upgrade with a click. So let's talk about charging. One of the claims in the manual is that you can charge from zero to 70% in one hour and from zero to 100% in less than two hours. That's incredibly fast. So I wanted to test this claim and see if it was true. I drained the battery all the way to zero until it shut off. Then I set the charge rate at the maximum 1800 watts and watched it go. And impressively, it did hit the 70% mark at 60 minutes. And from that point on, it took another 45 minutes to go from 70 to 100%. So yes, the claim in the manual is correct. Zero to 70% in an hour and up to 100% in less than two hours. I wanted to keep an eye on the internal temperature. And at the start of the charge, the temperature was 29 degrees Celsius, which is 84 degrees Fahrenheit. And during the charging process near the end, the highest I had seen was 43C, which is about 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Right after this screenshot, I measured the heat coming out of the exhaust fans and I was seeing higher temperatures, some as high as 118 degrees Fahrenheit or over 47 degrees Celsius. Now I'm not sure where or how many temperature sensors there are inside of the Max, and my guess is that what gets reported on the app is an average of all those sensors. As expected to extend battery life, the charge rate decreased at different intervals, I'll post these and some other test results down in the video description. In terms of charging efficiency, I measured 2.2 kilowatt hours going into the battery. And in my estimation, this gives a charging efficiency between 88 and 91%. Now remember that this number can't be 100% because it's running the four fans to keep it cool, converting AC to DC and running other electronics inside. Now let's talk about charging by solar, which I think is awesome. The Delta Max has an impressive 800 watts of solar input. I wanna see if I can get up to 800 watts with these two 385 watt bifacial panels. So after the bunny left and the sun came out, I was really excited to see what would happen. The back of my neck was burning and I was squinting, but I could see, yes, it was generating 800 watts of solar input. So if you look at the top of the app, this means that on a sunny day, I could recharge the entire battery in just a few hours. It's also great you can use any solar panels as long as they stay within these parameters up to 800 watts. You can also use EcoFlow's own portable solar panels. I have two 160 watt panels. I put them in series and here I'm generating over 200 watts of solar power. So not only can you charge from solar, you can also charge from the wall AC at the same time which means you can get up to 800 watts of solar and 1800 watts of wall AC to give you a possible combined total of 2600 watts. Now, if you have the max by itself, you're not going to be able to take advantage of this total because it seems like the battery charges around 1800 watts. In this example here, while dual charging, you can see it go above 2400, but this isn't sustained and the max lowers the total down to around 1800 watts. But when I connected the extra batteries to the max, that extra wattage has a place to go. And when it's sunny and I was charging, I saw the input peak over 2,500 watts. This dual charging feature is awesome, but it did highlight something I wish would be different. On this screen recording, I started out with 700 watts of solar. And when I plugged in the wall AC, you can see that the wall AC takes priority and the system decreases the amount coming from solar. Personally, I'd like to see it do the opposite, prioritizing the solar over the AC. It would be great if a future firmware update would give you the option to choose. The third way to charge your Max is through the 12 volt port in your car and it plugs right in the same spot that the solar goes in. So as I said at the beginning, I pretended there was a power outage because I wanted to test this thing in a real life scenario. So my first goal was to pretend there was a 12 hour power outage. Could I power my fridge, chest freezer, do some other essential things with a fully charged battery and the addition of these two solar panels? After plugging in the refrigerator, I ran an extension cord downstairs to the chest freezer and plugged that in too. And with both of them running, they're currently drawing around 260 watts and the display says to expect seven hours of life at this rate. I started around 11 a.m. and I really didn't know what the weather was gonna be that day, though I did know it was sunny when I started. With the fridge and the freezer now running on batteries, I went outside to set up the solar panels. And if you want a frugal tip, I got these 
these for free from a local installer because they were slightly damaged but fully functional. And since I had some extra PV wire from my last solar project, I ran the wires out the window to a sunny spot in the yard. And because these are in series and could be making up to 800 watts, I covered up one of them until all the connections were made. Now with the solar plugged in, I can remove the blanket and right away I'm bringing in more power than is going out. The fridge and the freezer are running and the batteries are getting charged. In an emergency, I might need to boil water. So with the battery charged and excess energy coming in, I chose this time to boil the water. Also, because I could take advantage of this excess energy before it gets dark, I charged my cell phone, which was at 0%, a USB battery bank, a rechargeable light, and a fan. And with everything charging or running, I'm still making more power than is being used. But that doesn't last too long because solar production is going down and I need to reorient the panels if I still wanna make dinner and reach the 12 hour goal. With solar production back up, I next wanted to make dinner for our family of seven. I'm using this Instant Pot, which is the same one I fixed from a previous video a few years ago. And after sauteing and adding more ingredients, I'm ready to cook for 30 minutes. The chili was amazing, but I did lose the sun when a storm rolled in and at this point, the battery was on its own and would have to last about four hours to make the goal. And I was happy to see that when 11 p.m. rolled around, we hit the 12 hour mark, there was still 6% left on the battery and the test was successful. Now, what about when there's a more extended power outage? I ran a similar test, but this time I added the extra batteries and didn't use solar. I did very similar things, ran the fridge, freezer, boiled water, and cooked in the Instant Pot. And after 15 hours of running all of that, there was about 35% left on the batteries. And with the fridge and the freezer still going, I could expect it to run another seven hours. So in these tests, I discovered that I can keep all the food in the house cold and power some other things, even if the grid goes down for a long time, and I can extend that time if I can add solar. And this is only one application. You could use it for tailgating, a cabin, any off-grid travel that you're gonna do, anywhere you want a portable power source. The Delta Max is brand new, so check the video description for the latest information and discounts. Let me know if you have any comments or questions, and if you like solar panels and you wanna learn more, check out the solar playlist here.